Hello everyone. Uh, many of you have asked me uh, to present uh, how my live setup works. And we happen to have here at the assembly, uh, which we are going to perform this evening, a small slot, uh, 50 minutes, uh, where I can actually present you uh, what's, uh, uh, how my setup works. Everything you hear on stage is uh, generated by the synthesizers you see. And I'm using only analog synthesizers and analog drum machines. I'm challenging myself. I mean, it's not about the sound, partly it's about the sound, but on the other hand, it's also about uh, the music I do. I know that I can do it using only analog synthesizers and drum machines. So it's like a challenge. And I get like, at the same time, I get like a really nice, uh, how to say, canvas and palette to work with. So, so, so uh, yeah. I like it, it's, it kind of makes me creative. And I'm able to do this live as well. So here you can see my setup. This is basically the same setup that I've uh, done my latest uh, album Urban Dreams with. And uh, I try, try to bring that on stage as well. And the fun thing is that the setup has remained more or less the same since uh, for 10 years now. I started exactly 10 years ago uh, with the Jupiter and Back and started to perform live. This is more or less that setup that I used. Okay, probably 70% of the setup is the same, and some things have changed. I started out, for instance, if we start with the audio side, so all audio is mixed in real time with a digital mixer. I started out using an old Behringer DDX3216, but then uh, I, I found a Yamaha Zero one v 96 That was much more flexible for me. I knew there was a lot of work to bring the mixes from the album into live. So to make this process simpler, the, the Perplexagon album was recording using uh, only the, the Zero One uh, V96 mixer, while to Jupiter and Back was recorded completely with an analog mixer. So what happened when I wanted to take Perplexagon on tour was that the Perplexagon songs were quite easy to fix because I had them already in my digital mixer basically because I created the album with that mixer. The two Jupiter and Back songs I had to kind of migrate from the DDX3216 mixer. And uh, so that took some time, actually two months I think I worked to get that first, uh, that second, sorry, live set up together. That was back in 2016. And then for my current setup, I'm using uh, an X32, as you can see in the rack here, actually. So I'm using the X32, and the reason for that is that the latest firmware makes it really flexible. So I have over a hundred inputs where I can choose from, uh, and I can select which channel I want to use and uh, for each song, basically, and then use those. So now, basically, I'm don't, I don't use the, the Zero One V96, I only use uh, as an effect processor and uh, offering additional preamps. The preamps go directly into the X32 uh, using ADAT cables. And um, then uh, I also have a, a few ADAT cables coming out from the X32 into the uh, Yamaha mixer, because then I can use the Yamaha mixer's uh, effect processors as additional effects. So uh, basically a couple of reverbs and uh, most of the delays come from the Yamaha while the rest is happening in the X32. So that's from the audio side. So I basically live, I have probably around uh, uh, about 40, 40, a bit over 40 inputs, I think, audio inputs to use. And uh, I mean, the good thing with the analog synths is like most of them are like monophonic. So you just have like one cable coming out. Some is are stereo. And uh, but some are even multi-timbral. So for instance, for the, uh, the uh, Andromeda, uh, A6, I'm using four outputs because I have, uh, I have, uh, well, the headphone socket is now connected just because it adds a bit support. I'm not using this cable. It's, it just adds a bit support to the multi-cable because it's quite heavy. But so basically I have like, I have four outputs from the, uh, from the uh, Andromeda. So it, it works as, as you can see, I have like written Moog and CS50 here. And that's because, because I mostly uh, use channel, uh, the, the third channel, for, for, for providing a Moog source base. And, uh, and the fourth is the CS50 emulation that I'm using the A6 with. And then I use quite a lot of other sounds as well. Originally, 
I mean, I started using the uh, Andromeda Live, I think, in 2016. So I wasn't using it much for the Perplexagon album, but in Urban Dreams, I've used it very heavily. It's actually one sound in particular that I'm quite fond of. So that's actually a sound originally made by Gatabus for the Rollinsons, but I reverse engineered it and brought it to the Andromeda. But I'm not going to, I don't have time, unfortunately, to show you any more sounds today. I'm just going to focus on the setup. So basically, go back to the audio side. Uh, the X32 is the main mixer. Uh, I have uh, 32 inputs from the preamps in the, in the rack below here. It's an S32 and then I have uh, uh, 16 additional preamps from the Zero One mixer, and then I have 16 preamps inside this one. So I have 64 channels to choose from, but the X32 can only mix 32 at once, but that's okay because I, I don't need, I mean, I can manage with all my songs with only 32 channels per song, because then I can uh, choose which channels I want for each song separately. So I have like different channels and use on different songs. I'm using all the FX, the built-in FX on the X32, I have a big sky behind in the rack. I have an MPX1 as my main reverb. And that's about it for the FX. Then I'm using the X32 and the Yamaha mixer uh, for, for everything else. So I have kind of eight processors here and four processors here. So it's like just 12 effect processors. So it's quite limited for modern standards. But yeah, I can manage with that. So that's, that's okay. So what else I have? I, then we probably should go to the MIDI side. What I'm mainly using for everything is my MPC 2500. So my MPC 2500 is my main sequencer and or basically my only sequencer. So everything I do, I do with that. So you could say I kind of have like backing tracks, but it's not backing tracks, everything is MIDI. So I have like a preset, I can actually show you. I have preset uh, MIDI tracks here, basically like a different sequences for different songs. I have some so-called init sequences as well, where I try to initialize uh, if I need like uh, some patches preloaded or something like that. If the song starts on, on the on, on like on, the, on bar one, and uh, yeah. Uh, so, so that's, uh, uh, that's the one which does basically everything. I have, a, uh, uh, I can show you the back side because that's also quite important. So here you can see my MPC and you can see that all the MIDI outputs are in use. So I'm using the MPC as a MIDI sequencer. And as you can see, I'm also having only one audio output in use. And that's the trigger cable coming out and controlling the arpeggio clock on the Juno 60. So that's the only audio signal. It's basically just a trigger signal and it's, it's strong enough so you can use it for triggering the, the Juno 60. And at the same time, I can show you what I have here in back. My main drum machine, at least for cymbals and, and yeah, rhythm effects is the TR-808. To be honest, the main drum machine that I'm using is the Jomox. Airbase that I have in the rack. It also has some samples, but I'm not using those. I'm just using the analog kick, snare, high tom, and low tom. Let me take a break and <laughs> show you quickly around. On my right, I have a Poly 61, Poly 6, and JX8P. And I have a, have a small key step that I'm using for controlling uh, my xenophones over here and occasionally also my Dave Smith Tetra. You can see I have a laptop on the floor and the laptop is going behind the stage soon because it controls only my visuals. So basically what I can do is I can trigger using my MPC and my MPC is used for triggering the different visuals. 
So you can see that the visual changes when I press the buttons on the MPC, and that's what the, button, the MPC does. So it, it uh, triggers, <laughs> among other things, the Resolute program that I'm using for running my background videos. And uh, in terms of MIDI, I only have four MIDI outs from the MPCs, but it's going through an eye connectivity box. So I have one eye connectivity box here. It's a uh, uh, Mayo XM, I think it's called. So that splits it up into four, and I have a lot of filters on it because some of the synths are really sensitive to, to like SUSEX, all kinds of MIDI signals that, that I don't use. Many of these, like the P61, has a really simple uh, retrofit. Same thing with the Poly6 has third-party retrofits that are really simple, and sometimes they are allergic to a lot of extra MIDI data. So I try to filter that out I'm using the, the uh, Mayo XM and a Mayo XL that I have in the rack here. So that's basically the main splitter that splits up uh, uh, channel A from the MPC into quite a lot of things, like everything in the rack, so I can control the mixer. From, from that. So when I'm changing patches here, so what you can see also is the faders are changing. And I also, work, I also work controlling the faders in real time using CC data on the MPC. So that's basically about the MIDI. And there's a lot of things that I can't do with some of these. As you can see on the Poly61, I have retrofitted it with adding a VCF input, uh, the Poly6 and uh, the Jupiter 6 and Juno 60 uh, have VCF inputs already, so I didn't need to modify those. Same thing with the Poly6. Uh, yeah, both, I had two Poly6s. Yeah, sorry, I haven't had time to go through all the synths here yet, but yeah, as you can see, Alpha Juno 2 on the top, Juno 6, the Jupiter 6. The Jupiter 6 is a new thing basically for me live. Now I'm dragging it out because it's used a lot on Urban Dreams as well. And my back, uh, the back side <laughs> has basically, it's more or less the same as it's been. A sequencer to the right and the touch by sound DRM1, which is like Vermona's, well, uh, the one which came before Vermona, so to say. So Vermona bought it, I think, at some point, but the first version was touch by sound. I think it was the first version. And the thing is that the drum sounds are higher in pitch than the Vermona machine. Uh, so I like these a lot for FX. So I'm using like... So I can like this type of sound and... So they're really high in pitch. So this is much more usable for effect type of sound. And I'm using also, it's as a clap. Now it's on a different channel that it's muted. Hi-hat and cymbal and yeah, snare and... Yeah, a sort of other effect sound as well. Mark II, three and four, they have all uh, lower pitch of the basic drums. So not so usable for effects as this old one. So Alpha Juno 1 here in the back, and I have a Korg Monopoly uh, below. And then I have two new additions are the, uh, the Xenophones, Hypersynth Xenophones, which are really versatile monosynths that I fell in love with and I've used all over Urban Dreams. Yeah, my front row is uh, Roland GX 3P. It's actually Kiwi 3P modded, uh, so it has a built-in mod. Uh, you can see it, I think, here. <laughs> yeah, so basically just as a new process so they can do a lot of things. I uh, have the Alessis Andromeda. Uh, as, then I have a second Korg Poly 6. So this is an early revision, uh, uh, Korg Poly 6. And this is a more modern version, uh, Poly 6. Uh, the old version sounds more 70s, and the new version sounds more 80s, which weird, but yeah, that's how, how it sounds like. So, so they're, they're actually kind of complementing each other, and I, I liked it a lot. I, I used the piece, the, the old one, for a lot of, lot of like uh, lead sounds, and I used it instead of my micro preset, which I usually previously used, but now I have a lot of polished sounds as well that I need for the Urban Dream sounds. And that comes from, yeah, the new, uh, the old Polysix, sorry. Oh yeah, and then I have uh, an old uh, M audio trigger finger that I modified. You can send out simultaneous CC values and, and, and uh, uh, note values. So that's essentially my setup. The one thing I forgot to mention, or which I was speaking about, but I started to speak about something completely different, is the CV signals. So I'm, I'm basically having a lot of CC data coming out from the MPC for controlling my old synths, and I'm using the uh, 
let me see. I'm using a Kenton processor for converting those CC signals into uh, MIDI CV for my old synths. So, now I have to leave the stage because <laughs> they have going to have a program starting in a few seconds here. So, that's anyway, that's uh, about me, that's about my setup. And sorry about this rushed video. I hope you, you got something out of it. And uh, uh, I hope to make another workshop video soon. Uh, I'm going to make one at least at some point where I'm uh, explaining about my studio setup, for instance. Anyway, that's my live setup. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment field below the video. And I'll answer it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.